going to fix that squeak. We'll get that squeak taken care of. There's only one place in the world you can find YouTube content like that, and that is on the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. We're moving right along here. Step two is I got to pull all the nails that are still in the floor. Not that many. Oh, I just tripped over one. That's what happens when you hit a couple nails, son of a... I bet, I bet I got one in my tool trailer somewhere. I found it, along with a whole bunch of other stuff I thought I had and lost, and I got to really, really had to do, redo that tool trailer. I was about ready to give up and be like, this is a lost cause looking in this tool trailer. The last drawer, I opened it up and found a whole set of eight inch floor scraper blades. I'm going to test this new blade out over here where there's going to be cabinets covering it just to see what it does. I don't want to go out in the middle here and give a whoop and just scrape off a huge chunk of wood. So we'll uh, give it a shot over here. This line here, work in front of the fridge, work it over there, dull the blade down, and then come back to the, the middle part. Hardly any effort at all. Oh, man, that dull blade worked pretty good. This is less than 24 inches, so I'm still good. But I just wanted to give you an idea. There's another, another piece right there of what a sharp blade would do scraping this floor. I'm going to keep at it, stick to the area that's going to be covered by cabinets. I'm getting risky, heading out into the middle now. Down low, trying to go slow. It's amazing how durable this blade is. After all that scraping around the sides, it's still would easily cut you. The grain of the wood is going this way. So I am basically got the, the blade going this way and just taking little sweeps into the area that's got these. And it's got this stuff on it.
time I do a fair good bit of manual labor, uh, there's a lot of people in disbelief. <laughs> Why in the world would you be doing this intense manual labor? On your hands and knees, this is, this is a dirty job. The, the answer uh, is just be, because I like it. I can't wait to get this floor to look better than that floor. I know 100% now that this is just on the surface. Right here where I went through with that blade, perfect red oak floor. Perfectly preserved red oak floor is under this nasty mess. I'm going to keep going. This is not the end of this video. Just gotta keep, keep, keep on, keep on for right now. So the next morning, I kept at it for quite a while last night, just shaving and shaving the floor. There are still some areas that I should spend more time shaving and shaving. Break out the drum sander and put in some low grit sandpaper and just see what happens. I may go back to to scraping and scraping for another hour or so to get that just to get the thicker stuff off and so there's only just a fine film left on the wood. Um, one thing I don't want to happen is it to heat up and liquefy and seep down into the cracks in between the boards and then I'll have dark lines between all my boards. Um, that's, a, that's definitely a no-go. Before I hit that, get that drum sander out though, I, I do have to go around the entire thing again and make sure I get all those nails out. Here's a close-up example of what I need to force myself to do. I just said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. This here is pretty thick. This here is much thinner. So I'll show you how I, I work this with the grain as much as I can. <clears throat> That'll buff out. Just in those few seconds of scraping, that's a considerable amount there that is not basically turned into dust and gumming up the sandpaper. Okay, enough of that scraping stuff. You rent this at Home Depot. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to show you how to, how to use it. There's a short learning curve on the rhythm of, you know, how you engage uh, the belt or the drum rather. It's pretty easy to, to get the hang of. It's always best to start an area that's going to get covered up. There's going to be a 24 inch row of cabinets all the way down here. So this is the first, first spot. Push this forward, engages the drums. And get carried away, these things are a little bit to handle. Not bad for the first couple passes. Said it's gonna take a while to get this all down. I'm liking it. So let's take a look here. All right, not too bad. We got a little bit of gum up in here, but that's still not that bad. I can make several more passes. It's not melting it. It's, it's not grinding it in. So it's working out pretty good so far. I've got a lot of these and I can go get more. Much easier in that dang scraper.
This is the first sanding drum belt. Went quite a ways off of this. Um, I'm not going to push it. You don't want these things heating up and embedding into the, to the wood. Your next tool is going to be this edging sander. Get up close, show you how this works. This gets you up real close to the wall. This here will roll along the wall. This sands right up to it, right up tight to the wall. 24 grits. You can see how that goes right up to the edge of the wall. You have adjustable rear wheels. So this back part isn't sanding, isn't doing much sanding. This front part is doing the sanding. And you can adjust how aggressively it hits the floor by adjusting the rear wheels. We're going to leave it right where it is for now and see how it works. This is a beast. It's kind of a wild beast. You gotta tame it. You gotta hold on to it tight. Hold on tight. Get her back. So edge sanding 
Well, it's, I don't like it. I'm not very fond of it. So I uh, just give myself, a, give myself a little bit of a break. Got all the way over to where the refrigerator opening is. I got to pop up, take that apart so I can get up to the edge there. Just going to mix things up, keep on moving with a little bit of going on the second pass with the drum sander. Now, if you haven't picked up on it yet, this, this is pretty easy. Comments on the, the last video uh, show that a lot of people have done this. A lot of DIYers, a lot of handymen, a lot of small remodeling companies, and they're posting their pictures. Yes, they're putting links to their pictures, which I think is great. You can tag me on Instagram and I can uh, repost them. Maybe give your business a shout out. Your hardwood floor business, if that's what you're into. This has two passes. This has one pass. I'm going to show you what the uh, sanding belt looks like. It's not picking up anything. It's not picking up any more of that gunk. I still have to do many, many more passes. This is still 24 grit. We're going to do a whole nother pass on 24, then start ramping it up 80 to 100. Then everything gets completely troweled. Troweled, troweled, troweled. I got to fix this freaking hole here. They couldn't have drilled it in the middle of one board. They had to drill it in the middle of, in between two boards. Over here underneath the refrigerator. This is where a radiator used to be. You can tell there's a little bit of water damage here. But this is all going to get covered by the refrigerator cabinet and another cabinet here. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Oh, bonus footage all I've got to really offer is a close-up of what it looks like I know there's gonna be people and you didn't show a close-up handyman all right there's a nail hole there's a nail hole but all these seams here look really good considering these are twice as old as I am this is not bad at all these gaps here are perfectly normal Considering it's winter time too, it's dry out. It's a little bit there, but that'll all get filled. So I'm up to an 80 grit so far. And the next phase is I gotta go set all my shiners. See, that's it. There we go, we're still, we're still rolling. Shiner there, shiner there, shiner there. Shiner there. Um, that's about it. 
and yes those will be seen this one this one and this one won't that'll get covered by the oven but this one here and this one here could potentially be seen uh, then I got to deal with this this is gonna be a big pain in the keister um, I'll probably I'll probably take this board one of these boards over here I'll cut out and uh, well I've got to do two two of them so this is a seam right here obviously we can use that as a seam and I'm not gonna go overkill because this board here it's the longest board in the entire kitchen look at that it goes from right there all the way all the way down keep on going look at that no splinters no splinters it's the entire length of the kitchen it's ridiculous so I'm not gonna pull that whole board out obviously Ugh. I'm gonna try to do this by just taking like a, a section here and then an overlapping section there I don't like that because this is one of the tightest boards in the whole place this seam this seems there but you got to do what you got to do and that will be tomorrow